What's up guys, it's Michael Panetta with Tech Examined, and today is Tuesday, June 3rd, and today on Tech on the Tees, we're going to be talking WWDC 2014. So we're still going to have three topics today, they're just going to be all Apple related. We've got iOS 8, we've got OS 10 Yosemite, as well as the developer portion of WWDC. So, let's get started. With so much to cover for each topic, I'm going to give you guys the highlights today, and of course I'm going to give you my favorite features of iOS 8, of uh, OS 10 Yosemite, and of course the developer portion, uh, which may not necessarily uh, appeal to you, so comment down below and let me know what you want to see, uh, or what interests you the most, and we'll try to cover those topics. So with iOS 8, not a whole lot has changed with the look, but we've gotten a lot of features a la Android, uh, that we've been waiting for for a while. And with some of those features, we're going to start off with the Notification Center. Uh, getting a text as simple as uh, swiping it and you open it up and you got a reply, well now you're able to just swipe down and you're able to reply right to that. We're also, we have widgets, which is a huge third party thing, and uh, it's simply going into your Notification Center, you're able to, again, get more information from that and again, spend less time opening up each application, and you can simply go to one place to do that. Another cool feature with the Notification Center, all this is available on your lock screen, so if you get a text message, you can do the same thing, or you get a Facebook, and you can decide if you want to go into a reply or dismiss it. The next thing is when you double tap on your home button, that will bring up your applications that are currently open. Unfortunately, they didn't give us a close all, which something hopefully might be added in the beta. However, we were given your most recent contacts, as well as your favorites that you can put in there now you can simply double tap on this and you can swipe over and swipe left to take a look at your recent contacts much like you do your recently opened apps now when you click on a contact you can do things like email them call them FaceTime, and it's a lot better functionality, again, than having to go in and look for someone that you normally talk to a lot and fiddle with the contacts. One of my favorite features that was added to the iOS 8 is an email. Typically, when you open up an email and you wanted to start typing, uh, you realize that you need something back in your email, and you usually have to close it, save the draft, get out and go look for information, then go back into your drafts and do that. No more. You can simply swipe down, and it will not close your message, but it will put it at the bottom, so you can simply continue what you're looking for, and then you can simply tap on it, it'll open it back up, and then voila, you can get back into your email. Predictive text was also finally added to the keyboard. Now, it's something that I didn't normally use a whole lot when I was trying out Android, but uh, I did find that sometimes I would use it when I was texting, uh, just to kind of speed things up. Now, along with this, when you get a reply from someone, it will also allow you to pick a couple options down at the bottom. So if you got a yes or no question or a maybe, uh, you're able to just tap on that and do that. Well, it's something that I use. Eh, we'll have to see. But it's interesting that they added it finally. Group messaging got an update, uh, very, very nice update. When you're in a group message and you have a whole lot going on and you're busy and you don't necessarily want to be a part of the conversation, you can remove yourself as well as if you want to take the conversation private, you can remove other people from that. And if you're busy and you don't want to be bothered with what everybody's been saying, you can actually mute that so you don't have to worry about hearing it anymore. Along with that, they did a nice little group at the bottom so you can look at all the pictures that are being shared as opposed to having to go through uh, the whole entire message depending on how long it is and uh, take a look at your pictures. Another cool feature added to iMessage is the ability to tap to talk. Now, I use Voxer a lot to talk to some of my friends and uh, this is definitely a welcome addition to that so I don't necessarily have to go into more than one application. If we're texting and talking, you can simply say something and then send it off by tapping down, say what you need to say and let it go. Now the same thing goes with the camera. I did try that out and of course as being a beta, uh, you're able to do video as well as take a picture. Uh, I couldn't get the video to work, but of course that's something that will be added down the road, but the picture works pretty well. Something available that is new is called iCloud Drive. Now this will allow you to access your documents across all your devices or even your computer, your laptop, and uh, if you have applications that are compatible with each other, if you open up a picture, if you're going to be working on a Word file, uh, or a uh, Excel file, you're able to do that by uh, sharing those and uh, changing them up. And the cool thing is it'll save it back to the original file, so any changes that you've made are in one spot. Next up is health. Now this is something that uh, is pretty much a third party 
type of uh, step that I think Apple is taking, and I think will lead into the wearables, you know, if they come out with a watch or something that they come out with uh, down the road. And the nice thing about this is all these third-party apps that we currently use, uh, we have to go into different applications to uh, access all the information, and they really don't talk to each other. So this is something that Apple is going to introduce called HealthKit. This is all one place for all of your apps. Now this will be able to talk to each other, gather all your information, and if you're someone that is in close contact uh, with your doctor where uh, it comes to your your blood pressure, uh, your heart rate, anything that is a serious uh, uh, illness that you may have and uh, is something that you closely monitor, uh, they're adding something with the Mayo Clinic uh, that is going to be coming out, and hopefully this expands down the road. Again, if it's something that you're going to use, that if you have a serious health condition and uh, the levels spike up a little bit or something right isn't happening, uh, that actually will contact your doctor uh, or send an information to the hospital, and they'll actually contact you and follow up with it. So if it's something that you need immediate care on, you may not even realize it, and it might save your life. So that's something that we're going to closely follow uh, down the road with the, the health kick that is going on, as well as see how it's integrated if Apple ever does uh, introduce a wearable item. Next up is family sharing. Now, there is a, some family sharing currently going on right now. You're able to share your music and you know your apps and stuff like that. Uh, if you're on the same uh, password using the app store. My wife and I use it all the time, and we start, you know, sharing the music and the apps and all that sort of thing. However, Apple is kind of expanding it a little bit and making it a little bit easier uh, that you're able to do. So we're going to bring you more on that, and it's actually pretty cool to be able to see uh, one of the safety features that they've added. If your child has, uh, you know, the password uh, as far as uh, the same password for purchasing things, and you don't give them the password, it will notify you if they try to buy something so you don't have to get that credit card bill at the end of the month. It's going to be a little bit more surprising than you want it to be. So we'll show you more on that down the road iPhoto got a whole bunch of updates, and again, I'm going to do a whole video on that for you guys, from editing uh, to allowing you to adjust the light to uh, doing something pretty cool called a time-lapse feature. So we're going to do a whole video on that, but iPhoto is definitely stepping it up big time and uh, bringing the idea of using your phone as your camera to another level. So we'll get a whole video on that. I think you guys will enjoy that and uh, it's pretty cool. iCloud is something that I always liked using, but I get to the point where I run out of that 5 uh, gig of free space, and I just don't want to use it anymore because I don't feel like paying the extra money to do that. Well, Apple has lowered the cost on this uh, pretty decently, and uh, you can now get 20 gigs for $99 a month, so for less than $12 a year, you can store your 20 gigs on the iCloud. If that's not enough for you and you need more, they have another level, which is 200 gigs for $3.99 a month. So, you know, you're spending a little bit per year, but you have instant access to your photos. You don't necessarily have to keep them on your phone. They do have a terabyte level, but they did not list the pricing on that. It'll be really interesting to see what that is, so we'll bring that to you guys as it comes. Siri is uh, getting a little bit smarter or a little bit more of a copycat. Uh, you can now say, hey, Siri, and it will wake it up, and uh, you can ask your questions uh, a la Android, uh, Google. And uh, you can also uh, play a song uh, while you're in Siri, and it will tell you what the song is. And then, uh, of course, if you want to buy it on iTunes, you can double or uh, tap on the uh, buy it now, and it'll take you over to the store, and you're able to purchase that. So uh, a little bit easier way to spend your money. Now, it's also gotten a little bit different and uh, different features with Siri, so we'll get into that in its own separate video and show you guys uh, what's going on with iOS 8. I'm sure there are things that I missed with iOS 8, and we will get into that. So if there's anything that you do want to see, be sure to hit me up down below. Moving on to OS 10, uh, newly named Yosemite for another place in California. This is a trend we're going to see with Apple uh, naming different things each year. Uh, this version is 10.10, .10, and they have made a ton of changes and uh, I think they're going to be good. Uh, a little bit of a design change at the overall look, uh, giving you more of a flat look, not necessarily a completely flat look uh, that we have in iOS, but uh, a flatter look and uh, a ton new features. One of the big things is continuity. This is something that you guys that have multiple uh, Apple products are going to love. If you take a phone call uh, on your uh, iOS device, and uh, the phone's not near you, and you're sitting on your computer, 
you're able to take the phone call on your computer. Same thing goes with working on an email. You're working on an email on your phone. You're able to get to that on your Mac or on your iPad or on your laptop. This is endless to be able to do this. And of course, we're going to show this to you guys as the days come by. And we're going to be uploading Yosemite to the computers and uh, trying it out and uh, letting you guys know what we think and covering those. If there's something that you want to see, Definitely comment down below and let me know. The notification center on Yosemite did get a little bit of a bump. Uh, of course, now with the widgets to be able to be on there, you're able to actually access uh, your daily events on there, much like your notification center on iOS. And uh, you can also access your applications by simply swiping over again, uh, or on my trackpad I'm used to swiping over, uh, but you can uh, click over and uh, open up your applications that you have purchased on your Mac uh, through there as well. The spotlight feature uh, on your computer is always tucked up in the right corner of your Mac or your laptop uh, has now been put front and center and not only can you type looking for your applications like you've always have but it is expanded onto the interwebs as well so if you're looking for a topic or you need to check things out much like your favorites bar uh, up in your Safari or your Chrome whatever you use it will populate that uh, much like you did in Google and uh, give you more information uh, that sometimes you probably are not looking for as mentioned with iOS 8 uh, also the cloud drive uh, again, something that uh, they covered on Yosemite, which again will allow you uh, a la Google Drive, a la Dropbox, uh, which will pretty much kill Dropbox at this point, I think, uh, if it's something that you don't want to use, accessing all your files on there. Again, we'll show you that from the uh, Mac side as well as the iOS side. The mail got an update, and if you're someone that uses a third-party application, you might want to give this a try again. They've updated the UI on this uh, to allow you to do much simpler things. Uh, make it much easier to get to your multiple uh, accounts that you might have, uh, as well as sending large files. Yeah, you heard that right. You ever get that message when you're trying to send an email and you got a large attachment and it doesn't work? Well, Apple has figured out a way to be able to send up to five gigs. You heard that right. Five gigs of data on there. And we'll go into that and show you guys. Uh, but basically, no more getting that goofy message that you can't send a large picture that you want to send. Uh, to someone that you know, or multiple pictures. Safari got an update as well, uh, something that I don't normally use a whole lot of. I tend to lean towards Chrome, uh, but I will try this out. They have modified the uh, bar to give you more room up top, and one of the things they say, you know, obviously I have my favorites as well. Uh, fear not, when you click on the box to start typing uh, your information in when you're searching, it will bring up your tabs down below, and you can simply access uh, any favorites that you may have, giving you a cleaner look and uh, a much uh, better experience. The tab you got a little bit of an update on Safari as well, uh, lumping your uh, sites together, uh, making it a little bit easier to use. Again, something I didn't use a whole lot of, but if you're someone that browses the interwebs a lot and opens up a lot of windows, this might be a nice way to organize everything that you're looking for and keep it in one spot. Again, along with iOS 8, uh, we're going to be giving you guys a whole bunch of test videos to show you out the different features of Yosemite. And if there's anything that you do want to see and are interested in seeing, again, common theme here in this video, hit me up down below in the comment section and we'll be, for, uh, be sure to take a look at that. Next up was the dev portion, which is the whole point of uh, WWDC to begin with. And they have absolutely blown my mind uh, with some of the things that they have. Most of it I don't understand. Uh, some of you may understand it a lot better than me. You probably will. But some of the things that they do are allowing for a more open platform for uh, third-party developers to really do some cool stuff and I'm excited to check it out with you guys. One of the things that I'm going to mention today is what they call extensions. Extensions is going to allow, you ready for this? Third-party keyboards. Finally. I love swipe keyboards. Uh, whenever I'm on an Android device I try it out. Uh, this is something that's going to be brought to it. So if you're someone that uh, would not go on an iOS device because they couldn't have third-party keyboards, uh, I know people that do. Uh, if you're not, swipe keyboards are coming, so uh, that'll be something that's really cool, uh, along with a ton of other things. A bunch of things that they have uh, along with that is HomeKit, which is something that's going to be allowed. Uh, again, the same thing as the health uh, side is uh, you're going to be able to take all your home automation things and have them in one spot. Again, opening the door for third parties to just go nuts to be able to figure out how to take your entire home from turning on lights, from checking your temperature, from making sure your uh, garage door is closed or open to be able to do things. As, as far as basically hitting one button when you go to bed 
and everything that you need to check is taken care of for you. Again, after you spend the thousands of dollars uh, adding all these devices to your home, uh, being able to do this in one spot makes the experience that much more pleasurable and uh, easy to use. So as that happens and uh, uh, I add more money to my house and uh, spend more, we'll bring that to you guys and try it out. Other items that were added uh, which went way over my head are CloudKit, Metal, uh, which are applications that will allow developers to make some killer games, killer applications, and uh, it just makes it easier for uh, them to, to work on things, to bring them to us faster, and uh, maybe someone that may have hesitated to jump into it because they may not feel like they could figure out uh, how to do things makes this that much easier. So if you're someone that was thinking about it, definitely jump into it. Now, again, something that uh, I'm not necessarily familiar with, uh, but writing code and C++ and all of that sort of thing. Apple has blown the doors off uh, of developers by writing their own brand new code called Swift. Again, something way over my head, and when I saw it, my whole head was like... But again, if you're someone that is interested in it, and uh, apparently it's almost like a, a plug-and-play, uh, for the most part, writing code made simple. And uh, again, if there's something that you want to see, maybe I'll get someone that knows a lot more about it than I do uh, to do a video for me and show you guys exactly how that works. So with all that being said, the event was a huge success. Not one single hardware item uh, was mentioned during the event, and a lot of people don't mind it. As much as we wanted to see certain things come out of the event, everybody was extremely happy about the dedication to software that Apple has taken with this. Now, of course, they've taken things from other uh, 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 in companies and, 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 and implementing into their into their world. But you know what? It, it's something that I think is needed uh, to keep up with the competition and uh, vice versa. You know, So it's welcome uh, that they are sharing the ideas or doing them in their own way but you know what it's all up to interpretation on how you look at it but I think it's something that's going to kind of revigorate Apple and uh, bring them back to the forefront and it makes me interested to see what hardware items they have coming out I think it's going to be a busy second half of the year for Apple and we'll bring all that to you guys as it comes now of course if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that thumbs up button uh, your uh, feedback is greatly appreciated and if you want to check out the next video, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I've got a lot of other things to shoot. Got to start working on the uh, iOS 8 stuff and uh, getting Yosemite taken care of. So this is our previous video, which was my walkthrough before WWDC and some of my final predictions, which is a bit of a long video. So grab the popcorn and check that out. Uh, I want to thank you all again uh, for all your comments. Uh, continued support, as I said. Uh, you guys have a good afternoon, and I will talk to you later. See ya!